I won't say good morning. I think we've got that covered. <laughs> good morning. I'm Pastor Stephen. If you're new or you're watching online for the first time or you're a person for the first time, um, I'm excited that you're here, but I've got a lot to say. So let's get to Matthew chapter 14, get to verse 22 and stand up. 14:22, and then once you get to that scripture, we're going to stand and read this. Matthew 14:22. Thank you, Jesus. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took a hold of him, saying, Well, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Lord, we thank you today for your word. It's active. It's alive. Mm -hmm. I believe it's purposed for each person in this room today. I believe this is a divine day, a divine moment that you have orchestrated to where you could look your people in the eye from the boat and say, come. We've come with a heart of, if it's you. And I believe you've come to say, it's me, come. Go out where you've never been before. Walk out on the waves. Start doing by faith, living by faith, believing by faith. Because I've got big plans for you. Lord God, I pray that with each word that I speak today, as Romans says, that faith would come by hearing the word of God. That as each word that I speak today, that it would be anointed and it would flow through each person in here today where faith would arise. Maybe faith for the first time to believe in the Lord Jesus. Or maybe it's faith to get out of the boat. Maybe it's faith to take more than two steps before the wind catches us. Maybe it's faith to walk out where we've never been to the deep before. Lord, let faith arise today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You could be seated. So this is the um, third week of our series that we're in. You're not going to be too lost if you haven't been around for the first two weeks. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll catch you up. It's okay. Don't feel like you're coming in to like the, the middle of a, a, a trilogy or something like that. Uh, the... <laughs> Fun, fun fact, I was years, many, many years ago, a friend of mine said, hey, um, we should go to the movies together. I said, sure, what are we going to see? And he said, I really want to see uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. I said, what is that? And he goes, oh, it's a Marvel movie. I said, I've never seen a Marvel movie before. And so we go to the movie theater, and for like two and a half, three, hour, three hours, I've got no idea <laughs> what is going on. And afterwards, he's like, that was awesome, wasn't it? And I go, I'm not sure. I really don't know. I hadn't seen anything leading up to that. So that's not going to be how it is for you today, okay? This is a preordained moment. You're not going to be lost, but you can catch, catch up in the last few weeks if you want to on, on our podcast or Facebook or YouTube. Uh, but what we've been talking about is faith. We've been talking about why do we need it? What is it? And how do we get it? And it's pretty simple by definition. Faith is the simple belief in Jesus. It's the simple belief. And that's what faith is. If you say, I've got faith, you're saying, I've got this simple belief in Jesus. But where it gets a little more complicated is that it's the simple belief in the complete personhood of Jesus. Not the parts that you just like. Not the parts that you're comfortable with but in the complete identity of everything that Jesus is. It's, it's the simple belief in the complete personhood of Jesus in spite of complicated circumstances. 
Okay? So it's a simple belief in the complete personhood of Jesus in spite of complicated circumstances because as long as we live on planet Earth, we're going to be dealing with complicated circumstances. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's believing that God is um, Jehovah Jireh. He is the provider. I'm like literally going to believe, kind of like what, what Sarah was saying, I'm going to believe that, that God is the provider and that he can take care of me. That's a portion of God's identity that some people don't actually believe in. They don't have faith for that if they're being honest. They've got faith in the saving power of Jesus. And I hope that he pulls me up out of hell and brings me to heaven. But I don't have faith that he's going to pay my light bill. So that's not really faith. There's a bug attacking me. <laughs> um, there, there's, there's, but there's, that, that's a, faith is the complete personhood. Of Jesus, the complete identity that He's Jehovah Rapha, He's the healer, He's Jehovah Shalom, He's my source of peace, yeah. He's Jehovah Nissi, He's my banner, my victory over every situation. Okay, he, 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 he's, he's Jehovah Jireh, He's the provider. If I know that I have a provider, it changes how I spend my money. See, we I grew up always thinking that, that wise people never spent money and foolish people did, and, and that's not really biblical wisdom with your money because you actually. God's a giver. He's a giver. He's a giver. I met a man when we were in, in um, Georgia, and it really touched me because we were, we were on a, a, a train. This is a weird story. <laughs> we weren't in Georgia. I felt like we were in Georgia. He was from Georgia. He was. <laughs> okay. We were in Chattanooga on a train, and this man gives me $50. And he goes, I just felt the Lord say, I need to give you this, you know? And, and I said, thanks, man. You know, we got to talk and everything. And he said, yeah, I've learned that if I keep shoveling it out, he keeps shoveling it in, and his shovel's bigger than mine. Yeah. And, and that, but that's, but that's kind of, that's not really, that's not really wise in the way of what we've got. We've got frugality and wisdom confused. Yeah. Right. God's not frugal. He's not sparing of anything. Not even his own son. Right? And so, so we have to believe that He is Jehovah Jireh. He's going to take care of me. But I've also got to believe that in spite of complicated circumstances. So you might start to wrap your mind around, hey, okay, yeah, He's Jehovah Jireh. That's cool. He's going to provide for me. Everything. What about now when it's five days late for rent? Oh, crap. Now we've got a complicated circumstance. Mm-hmm. I don't want to believe God anymore. Right? And, and, and so that's where, that's where faith becomes a little more difficult. But it is still the simple belief in Jesus. Yeah. But it's the simple belief and the complete personhood of Jesus in spite of complicated circumstances. Listen, it's, it's even, even more simply defined as believing all of Jesus all the time. Okay? Repeat that. All of Jesus all the time. That worked. All of Jesus all the time. All of Jesus all the time. That's faith. All of Jesus all the time. Jesus the healer with a bad medical report. Why? All the time. But the doctor said all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. I, that, that's where it gets hairy, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay? But that's what that we've been talking about. Jesus, as he went around, and I'm going to probably get there next week, kind of quoting a lot of this scripture. But constantly, his, 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 his constant reprimand towards people is, you know, I'm a faith. Mm-hmm. And, and it's kind of funny because we're thinking, well, where's all the, you don't have enough joy. You don't have enough kindness. You don't have enough patience. It ain't there. Why? Because faith is where it all starts. That's the foundation of it. Right? That's like walking into someone's house and it's, it's on a lean like this and you're going, oh, these windows need to be changed. You go, well, we don't really care about the windows. We can hardly walk. It's on such a slope. We're talking, we need to repair the foundation. Right? Faith is the foundation. Right? When you have faith, everything grows from it. Okay? And so, uh, we talked about last week, you can only believe in as much God as you know. So the more you know God, the more you can believe God for. There are some people that I know that they believe all of God that they know. They just don't know very much God. Yeah. Right? And our pursuit is supposed to be continuously knowing God more. And that the more that I know Him, the more that I can believe Him for. I was t- talking to you guys last week about, would you trust me to work on your car? Would you trust me to, to be your mechanic? And you go... I said, do you have faith in me? Not just faith that I could preach the word, but do you have faith in all circumstances and with all things? And, and then I went even a step further, a little more realistically. I said, do you have faith in me that I could teach you how to dance before a big, a, a big occasion? And the people that know me well enough in here kind of go, yeah, 
I got faith that you could teach me how to dance. Why do you have faith? That, oh, that's weird. Why would the pastor teach me how to dance? Because if you know me well enough, you know that I used to be a professional ballroom dancer. So when, see, the further your knowledge, the more your faith is. But then also, the more ground that you surrender, the more God can work. Okay, so once, once I've, you've actually given God a chance to work, He proves Himself, and then it's easier to ask Him to do it again. Okay, so we were, we were talking about that. The more ground you surrender, the more He can demonstrate as a power. Okay, it's like David. David knew Jehovah Nissi. He knew Him. He knew God's ability to strengthen His hands for war. Okay, the Jehovah Nissi is the Lord is my banner, or the Lord is my victory. Okay, the reason he knew that is because even when he was just a little shepherd boy, God had given him victories over lions and over bears in the sheepfold. Just dealing with sheep, he is conquering over lions and bears. So when it came time to fight Goliath, and every, everybody in their royal armor is shaking and metals clinging together of weak knees of people that are afraid, a little shepherd boy steps up and goes, I know Jehovah Nissi because I've seen victory. So he had, the only reason he had the faith that nobody else had is because he knew God better than anyone else did. Does that make sense? And so the more we know God, the more that we have faith. You know? And so David's heart was, was we know David is known as a man who's after God's own heart. So he knew God better than anyone else. He knew Jehovah Nissi, but also he had already surrendered fields for him to work in. Okay, he had already surrendered the little fields that he had so to see God work in that, in that area. See, everybody wants to slay the giant. Everybody wants that giant slaying, mountain moving, water walking kind of faith. But the truth of it is that that kind of faith is grown in the genuine pursuit of Jesus and the surrendered daily battles against the lions and the bears. Okay? I'm going to ask you a deep theological question. You just answer it within your own self, okay? Who let the lions and the bears come into David's field? Just think about that. No, no, no. King Jesus, the Messiah, literally came from King David's lineage. Now, this is little shepherd boy David. If one of those lions would have mauled him, who would have been the next king of Israel? If one of those bears would have disfigured him, who would have fought against all these armies? But who was the one that let the lion and the bear come into the field? God did. God let the lions and the bears come into the field. Why? Because he knew that the battle would be uncomfortable, but he was training him for the war. Okay? Church, you will face battles you don't prefer. Yeah. You would not prefer. David all day long would say, I wish that lion wouldn't have come. It ruined my day. I was just singing along with my heart to the Lord in the field. And a lion, when a lion pops up on Tuesday, it changes the course of the day. But all of Israel was thankful for the lion in David's field on the day when he cut off Goliath's head. But the only reason he had the faith to face that giant was he said, I've seen God work before. Mm -hmm. You need the battles. Okay? You be grateful for the battles when you get to the war. You know, we're talking about this story with Peter and he steps out on the, on the, on the water. You ever think about why Jesus didn't stop the wind for Peter while he was walking? That would have been the polite thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But no, I, I've got a theory and it's okay if you don't agree with it. I like to honestly think that, you know, they were already in a storm. When he stepped out of the boat. But in my mind, I like to think that the storm intensified by about 10. The very moment that Peter stepped out of the boat. I, I absolutely believe it. I absolutely believe that it was already raging. And he said, Lord, if it's you, just tell me to come. And he goes, yes, come. And he starts to walk. And I think he got about one or two steps. And the, the big swell came. A gnarly swell came. <laughs> just this, this big 30 foot high wave came. And, and the wind gushed upon his face. I think everything got so much harder when he got about two steps out there. Why? Because it always does. Yeah. It always does. Because he didn't want for him to just be able to walk on the water. He wanted for him to be able to walk on the waves. Yeah. Okay? That's why this series is called Wave Walkers. It's not still pond walkers. <laughs> Lord, if it's you, tell me to come and let everything be totally still. 
That's, that's how we would rather do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't let me sink. <laughs> Just hold the water back for a little while. You know? It's like, why is this, pa why is this pastor singing? I don't know. He's a dancer. Just excited. <laughs> Man, he wanted to teach him not just how to walk on the water, but walk on the waves. To keep his eyes peeled, even in the storm. I think those waves started to grow the moment that he started to walk. Because Jesus is trying to raise up people who aren't afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. Anything. Anything. People who believe in all of him, all the time. No matter the circumstance. Turn to James chapter 1. Don't forget that in that story, Jesus went up to the mountains to pray. Let them go out by themselves for a while knowing that the storm would come. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kind. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. That's endurance. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, Lacking in nothing. Alright? Lacking in nothing. Count it all joy. The testing of your faith produces endurance, produces strength, produces steadfastness. I told you guys when we started this series um, about three weeks ago, I stood up here and I said, okay, this is our third faith series that we've done in five years. We don't do them that often. And every time that we do them, there's all these significant moves of God and everything gets wild and crazy for a time. And I think at that moment, everyone's kind of excited and charged, like, oh, this is going to be wild. I'm going to have all this faith. Yeah. You know, well, now we're about three weeks in. Everybody's kind of like... I said we were going to be building faith. I don't know what you expected. Okay? I didn't say this was a joy series. I didn't say this was a financial provision series. Why do you think we only do them every couple of years? They wear you guys out. They wear me out. But the Lord wants us out there. Deeper. Deeper. You know? You were probably excited then. Now you're kind of mad. Why? Because the last few weeks have been wild, mm -hmm. yeah. haven't they? They've been crazy. They've been crazy. You know, some of you have had job interviews the last few weeks. Some of you haven't had job interviews. Some of you have applied for a million jobs, haven't gotten any callbacks. Some of you guys have been sick. Matter of fact, I think just about everybody's been sick. Okay, some of y'all have been sick two or three times just since we started this series. My apologies. <laughs> Some of you guys have had financial increase. Some of you guys have, un have had unexpected financial obligations to arise and totally change the course of your plans. That happened there. <laughs> I'm speaking from personal um, testimony there. Some of you have enjoyed a newness of fellowship with one another. Others of you have felt isolated or divided from people you previously felt close to. Some of you have, have seen glimpses of dreams coming true and others of you have had nightmares of fears coming to life. Some of you have gone deeper with God. Some of you have been dealing with some of the craziest family crises that you never thought you'd have to deal with. You know, and I don't know any of this. What's great about this is I don't know any of this because of conversations that I've had with you. I promise you, when I started this series three weeks ago, about four weeks ago, I wrote that exact paragraph down. Oh, man. <laughs> I promise you. I promise you, about four weeks ago, I wrote that exact paragraph in my notes. I don't think it was this brilliant prophetic revelation. I think it's just because I know how God grows faith. Yeah, right. I know how He grows faith. I needed you guys to walk it out for a couple of weeks before you take my word for it. But I know the recipe that God uses for growing faith. So I know if we're going to be growing our faith that we're going to be going through some stuff. Okay? 
God has a formula for making faith. It's like a recipe for cake. If I try a bite of cake and I go, hmm, that got sugar in it. You go, wow, you're so insightful. You go, you go, no, it's a cake. Of course it has sugar in it. What kind of cake doesn't have sugar in it? Did you use flour also? <laughs> this is really good. Uh-huh. Right? You know, what? That, that, that doesn't take brilliance or wisdom. That that, that, you got an egg? <laughs> wow. Oh you know, it, it's like, why? Because that's how you make a cake. Well, for me to say, I know you guys have been going through some stuff the last few weeks is because... God's growing faith. <laughs> that's what it takes. That's, that's what it takes. It, it, I mean, it's, it's not a special revelation. It's just God's recipe for faith building. I'm, I'm going to share with you the full recipe today of how God grows faith. Okay, there's three ingredients that I believe God uses. <laughs> there's three ingredients that I believe God uses to grow faith. I just, I, they're scriptural, and I've seen it time and time and time and time again in my life. Okay? Three ingredients. And when these three ingredients come together, faith is the outcome. Okay? The simple belief in the complete personhood of Jesus, in spite of complicated circumstances, is what comes out of these three ingredients being put together. Being put together. Okay? Being mixed together. The first one is belief. I meant to bring my little dry race board, I forgot. Just pretend like I wrote belief. I'm not going to write a lot on it. Just belief. Okay? <laughs> belief. Belief. Belief is the, here, it's the first ingredient. You can't have faith without belief. You must believe. Okay, but how do we believe? Belief comes by hearing the Word of God, receiving, reading, knowing God more. This is like the diet portion to becoming the spiritual athlete that God wants to make you, okay? You can't really get too far away um, in, your, in your athleticism without first addressing your diet. Matter of fact, we're, we're talking about building these spiritual muscles and becoming a spiritual athlete. Do you know that scientifically it's even impossible if you were to start to want to gain muscle, that, that, it, that it would be impossible for you to eat 1,000 calories a day and, and add muscle to your body? You cannot do it. And the reason why is because muscles have to be supported by nutrition in order for them to grow. Okay? And so your body has a resting amount of calories that it needs. Everyone in this room is different. Mine's about 6,000. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> the Lord made me funny. But you know, everyone, everyone has a different resting of what it just takes for you to just do daily things. You know, maybe that's about 2,000 calories. Well, if you want to start adding muscle to your body... You actually have to eat more than 2,000 calories a day to fuel the muscle growth that you're wanting, okay? So a lot of times, I know I'm just going off here, but this will have, have a point. But that, a lot of times people run into a, a, a little bit of an issue when they're trying to lose weight and gain muscle. Because they're trying. you have to have less calories than your body needs to lose weight. But you have to have more calories than your body needs to gain muscle. So a lot of times people are trying to eat 1,200 calories a day and lift weights. And, and you don't you understand it doesn't work. That's how it is with faith. You have to be putting the Lord in to have faith. You have to be getting into the Word. And even more so than what you already need. You need more. See, there's a certain amount of being in the Word and being in prayer that you just need to function. I'm talking to not strangle out the lady at uh, checkout number four. Okay? There's just a certain resting amount that you need. Some of y'all need a lot already just to, to begin with. You know what I'm saying? But now if we're going to talk about more, then I've got to start putting more in. Okay? I've got to start getting in the Word more. I've got to start coming to church more. I've got to start putting all these spiritual nutrients in me. Okay? That's step one is belief. I have to have belief. Okay? But now look at, we're still in James, but go to chapter 2. Because we're going to add the next ingredient. James knows faith. This is one of my favorite books of the Bible. I've often said it is my favorite book of the Bible. Because it just covers so many good spiritual principles. And it starts talking about faith. But in chapter 2, in verse 14, he said, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of them says, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for their body, what good is that? So faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. 
Right? It goes on to say, well, someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Okay? So we're talking where there's this next ingredient. You have to have the belief. He doesn't say this anything against the belief, but it doesn't stop with the belief. Now you've got to have the works. You know, protein is the nutrition that's the best for fueling of your muscles if you want to gain muscle group. Uh, this is just free, by the way. <laughs> I'm just, if you guys, you know, get all super jacked up and everything after this sermon, you know, this is, you know, it's just on me, okay? But, but, but listen, muscle growth takes protein, okay? Protein is the primary nutrition, uh, nutrient that fuels or, or helps your muscles to recover so that they can grow. And, you know, most nutritionists recommend that if you're trying to gain muscle growth, then you need to eat somewhere between a half gram and one gram of protein per day. Okay? So if I'm, uh, for, of your body weight. So if I'm 180 pounds, which after the last few days I'm more like 187. <laughs> but, um... If it, that means I've got to eat between 100 and 200 grams of protein a day if I'm going to be able to add muscle to my body. Okay? That's just, that's just scientifically, nutritionally accurate. But here's the thing about it. I could start eating 200 grams of protein every day and never lift a single weight and I would not gain muscle. Mm -hmm. Do you see how that works? Yeah. You go, man, I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is raw chicken breast. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna say grilled. That's a whole nother level. Of That's a whole nother level of dedication. Oh, no wonder you're not doing so good. All I'm doing is all I'm doing is grilled chicken breast, 200 grams of protein, and, and all this, you know, and everything's great, and all my macronutrients are all just perfect. And I'm all, doo -doo -doo -doo, you know, and it's like, well, are you like lifting any weight? Are you working your body any? No. <laughs> then all those nutrients are for nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? And unfortunately, that's how the church is a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. They're getting, oh, well, I believe, and I'm in the Word, and I come to church. Okay, what are you doing with all of that? That's wonderful that your diet is clean, but it, 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 the protein is to support movement. That's why it says faith without works is dead. It's not faith at all. Because it's, you've, got to, you've got to have these ingredients. It's like a cake. Well, I put flour in it, but where's the sugar, man? This, taste, this cake tastes horrible. Well, I just put the flour in. Isn't it a rose? I need sugar for it to be cake. God says, I need works for it to be faith. I need you to be doing something. Works is doing, going, giving, training, moving, serving, exercising. Okay? It, it, it's... It's, it's in your everyday life. It's in your tithes. It's in your offering. It's in hearing of needs and meeting them. Not, not calculating whether or not it's, it's going to be comfortable for you to meet them. But knowing that there's a need and I can meet it, meeting it. It's serving in the church. It's doing. This exercise you spiritually. If you feel like you've been at a spiritual plateau for a while, I can guarantee you, you have not been adding this ingredient enough. Right. You've been sitting around. You know what happens if you eat about 200 grams of protein and about 4,000 calories a day and you don't do anything with it? You just get fat, church. That's all that happens. Yeah. And that's the church these days. It's just fat. It's just sitting around eating and it's not doing anything with it. You know? And you have spiritual gifts. God says, use your gifts. You have the gift of teaching, teach. You have the ability to share, to encourage, to be hospitable. You should be inviting people to your home for dinners. You should see people that are new in the church and you should get to know them. You should meet them. Why? So that they'll come back. No, 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 no. Because you need the workout. Because yeah. you need it. It's not, it's not about, it's not about, it's like, you don't even get to them. I don't preach necessarily just so that souls can get saved. I preach because I have to. It's the only way to keep my faith alive. Because yeah. I have a gift of teaching. We're, we're starting a podcast called Walk With Me. It's going to be live this next week. And it's, it's me for about 15 minutes going through three chapters of scripture a day. And it's going to come out next week. And I've been filming now or recording now for about three weeks. And you know what has been blessing me to record for these last three weeks? A, a couple of weeks ago, Lauren was accidentally even deleted like a week's worth of it. And you know, and, and, and I didn't care at all. I said, well, I didn't record those honestly so that anyone would ever listen to them. I recorded them because I needed the workout. It, it builds up my faith. Even sometimes just to preach with a recorder alone in a room because I'm doing 
I'm putting my faith into motion. And you have gifts and God wants you to start using them. Strength comes by taking the nutrients, you're putting it in, and converting it into energy, into movement, into exercise. And everyone in this room has the ability to do that one, one way, shape, or form or another. Me and Lord will often have days where we just kind of wake up in the morning and we go, what are we going to go do today? Where are we going to go today? Who are we going to try to bless today? We're going to take lunch to somebody. We're going to write a card to somebody. We're going to do this. We're going to because not because it's even a blessing to them, but because I need the workout. I need it. I need it. You know. And, and listen. So we've got belief is the first ingredient. We've got to be eating right, putting these nutrients in, being in the Word, being in prayer, being in church, worshiping the Lord, putting all this good stuff in. Belief, and then now I'm adding in works. The works, the movement, the doing, the ministering, the talking, the evangelism, the giving to people, the being hospitable, the serving. I've got all of this second ingredient. But you know, the thing about it is, is we haven't yet made an athlete. You understand? God's trying to make spiritual athletes. You know, we haven't made an athlete yet. You know what we've made so far? A bodybuilder. Okay? Now, somebody, I don't think there's anyone in this room that's going to get mad at me just by the looks of y'all. But a bodybuilder is not an athlete. Not an athlete. A bodybuilder is a glorified, it's a glorified model. Okay? And that's another, that's another thing about the church is we, even, the, even the, the growing that we do, the diet that we do and the exercise, it grows our strength. But a bodybuilder is not yet an athlete because a bodybuilder takes the muscle that they've got and it's all just for show. It's all just so they can pose. You know, flex the calf just right. It's all just for show. But an athlete can take the nutrients in their diet and the muscles on their body and can do something with them that no one else can and can go through things that no one else can go through. That's an athlete. You know, every year, I'm a football fan, try to hang with me if you're not, but every year they have something in Indianapolis called the Combine. And they invite all these college athletes to come and basically try to showcase or demonstrate their athletic abilities. They see how fast they can run a 40-yard dash. They see how many times they can bench press 225 pounds, uh, which wouldn't be a lot for me. But for them, it's, you know, like 40 sometimes, and it's crazy. And they, they test their vertical and how high they can jump. And they get all this, and they think that they have it written down perfectly what an athlete is. And then they'll use super high draft capital to draft people that performed extraordinarily well, well on that day. And then they'll pay them at least 20 to $30 million as a sign-on bonus to come and join our team. Okay? And you know what? More times than not, the people don't even result in good football players. Right. But, they're, but they can jump. But they can run. But they can lift. But they don't eat anything but quinoa and raw chicken <laughs> mixed together. <laughs> right? Raw quinoa. But listen, but that's not, but that's not, an, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for someone that can run a 40-yard dash in 4.1 seconds in full pads and gear with 200 and 300-pound men running after them. How many of y'all know that's different? Yeah, it's different, you know. Oh, I've been training for this moment. I got my special Reeboks on. Oh, oh. You know, how many of y'all know it's different in that moment when all you're thinking about is the speed than it is when the ball's in your hand and the lights are on you, right? Listen, there was a move of God in this church last, last year. I don't think a lot of y'all were, were aware of it even. But, but the Lord did something special last year and He raised up a group of men in this church. To, to become a part of one of the greatest flag football teams of all time. Oh, man. Oh. And we were called, we were called the Mountain Movers. Okay? You're giant slayers, my friend. And um, so God raised up these mighty men of valor last, last year. Sorry. 
And, uh, man, we were excited about this team we put together. You know, we started drawing up playbooks. And, I mean, we, we, on, on the back of napkins. And then, and then Jay got this, like, app on his phone. He started doing X's and O's. And we had this whole playbook. And we, I could say to them probably still to this day, like, hey, I want you guys to, to run this play. You know, we're going we're gonna to do a honeymoon, honeymoon, honeymoon. And they're like, oh, yeah. You know, and they, and they got it. And then we've got, like, hand gestures. Like, like this is, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> Same play, same, same play, same play. Hey, this is the same play. We're gonna run it again. We're gonna run it again. Man, we, we got all together. And then, and then so so we were putting the we had belief in. Listen, we had the belief in. We we were and we were doing our homework and we were studying and we were researching. And then we we're like, well, we gotta start working it, right? So on Sundays after church, we started meeting at the park. And we started running all these plays and doing all this stuff and practicing. And I'm not gonna lie, I started to think, where are the best people to ever play flag <laughs> I came home, I talked to Lauren, I said, you know, I tried for the Titans, but they play too many, they play too many games on Sunday. I, just, I don't know how, I just don't know how it would work. I could go to maybe the Monday night games and stuff, but I got to preach in the mornings, you know? Everything out of my hands, just like touchdown, touchdown, you know? Got my receivers, we're doing these trick plays and everything, and man, we were, we were so good, right? Well, we had this, tur we had this tournament coming up. And the other team contacts us and says, hey, the term, we know the tournament's coming up, but do you guys want to do a scrimmage at our place to get ready for the tournament? Well, yeah, it's a great idea. So we show up at their place. Uh, yeah, to lay it out for them. With, with belief? <laughs> <laughs> with works? <laughs> okay. We show up, and we're at an actual field. It's painted. We're under the lights. Everybody's got their family with them. We've got probably, I don't know, it might have been 100 people there. I mean, just cheerleaders. <laughs> this was crazy. We get out there. And we haven't prepared for this. <laughs> I hadn't prepared for what it was going to feel like when we were on about the 25-yard line. And I look up at the scoreboard, and I see that we're down 40 to nothing. <laughs> and I hear my wife and my children, Go, Daddy, go! Go, Daddy, go! Every play we ran failed. <laughs> Everything out of my hand went to the other team. <laughs> I hadn't prepared for this moment. And so I snapped the ball. And I remember looking over here, looking for my receiver. Nobody's open. And I, there's a lane. And I ran faster than I've ever ran in my life. I mean, I was moving, and I got to that pylon, and I dove. There's not even a reason to dive in flag football. But I, I, had, I dove, and I reached, and I scored a touchdown on that pylon, and I rolled three times, and I slapped my knee on the fence, and I tore my meniscus. <laughs> And I, and I got up, and the team said, are you okay? I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then I looked down at my knees like this big. And, man, it was, it was different. It was different. But you know what? It made us better. It made us better. We got back to practice, and we, just, we said, hey, that didn't go the way we thought it would. <laughs> Take that playbook. Throw it in the trash. <laughs> all new plays. All new everything. Right? It changed us. We plays. need it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, combat is different. And that's and God uses scrimmages and combat to make spiritual fit people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it takes belief plus works plus tests yeah. to make faith. Yeah. And I don't know why we are always so surprised by the last ingredient. Yeah. We, it throws us off, but we need it. We need it. You enlisted, you made it through basic, but how are you in combat with real bullets flying? How are you with the under the lights? 
with your family shouting your name? <laughs> How are you when you look up at that scoreboard and you go, we're never going to win, but we can't get skunked. Right. right? How are you? It's different. You need those moments. Listen to me. God orchestrates those moments, those scrimmages to those who want faith. Mm. Now, one and two, you have control over. But number three, God gives to you. And often when you least expect it, but when you most need it. If you'll look back on the last few weeks or you'll look back in your life, a lot of times these tests come and it feels like it's at the worst moment. But it's at the best moment. It's at whenever, it's at the moment that you need the growth in your faith the most. Okay? You know, we need the fire. It's like, it's like pottery. You know, clay is just water and mud until it hits about 1,000 degrees. When it hits between 1,000 to 3,000 degrees for a certain amount of time, that's how it actually becomes pottery. Right? That's how we are. We're just belief and works. We're just mud until we can actually make it through the test. Can, are we just bodybuilders or can we go through things and do things that nobody else can because we're actually people of faith? Right? You know, and, and listen, when you're eating right and you're, be, and you're believing God and you're exercising, then you're ready for the game. Not that it's easy. Not that, not that it's easy. No, if it, it wouldn't be a test if it was easy. But you can endure it and you can make it through it and you're stronger because of it. You know, we went to that tournament another month later. We didn't win any of the games. Okay. But we were so much better. Every game we were in was competitive. And I don't know what would have happened. It, 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 we would have got skunked at all of them had we not had the scrimmage. Right. Yeah. We needed the scrimmage. We needed it. We needed the lion. Mm -hmm. We needed the bear. Okay? Who let the lion in? Who let the bear in? God did. Because God said, I need the man or the woman that can slay the giant. And they'll never have the faith to slay the giant until they've seen me work against the lion. They've seen me work against the bear. Okay, so I, I want to give you a chance to grow your faith today. So I've orchestrated tests in all your lives. I've been praying for them. No. I want, I want to grow your faith today. Now the Lord sends the test in His own wisdom. But what we can control is number one, the belief. And number two, the works. And then we're ready for God to send the test. And we can rejoice when we experience various trials because we know that this testing produces endurance. I put some sign-up sheets in the back for you today. And the reason is because you need the exercise church. You need the work. You don't need to just take this message and go, wow, that was a good word. Get in your car, drive home, go about life as usual. No, no, no. I don't want to see all this protein just sit on you. Okay, I want to see you do something with it. That's how it produces muscle so that you're ready for the game. Okay, and so I put three sign-up sheets on the back. Everybody look back there. Right there where the hats are. There's three sign-up sheets with pins beside Jay there. Okay, there's three sign-up sheets. And I want to, I want to encourage you to, to think deeply about putting your name down on one of those three sign-up sheets. Okay, the first one is for our integrity seminary. Um, we're going to do a, an information lunch Sunday, June 26th, immediately following service. You're putting your name down to receive free lunch. <laughs> we're going to start with that. Okay? That's not like a lion or a bear. That's like a, a little chipmunk. But we're starting, <laughs> we're starting there. Okay? If you put your name down, that's going to help me be able to, R to know how many are going to RSVP so I know how big of a lunch to provide for us. But it's going to be on Sunday, June 26th. Now, it says seminary. That sounds intimidating. It's Bible college. It's a 12-month program. Is it free? Heck no, it's not free. All right? Why? Because we're talking about faith here. Okay? Faith requires sacrifice. It's not as expensive as you might think, but it's a chance for you to step out and go, I want to, I want to learn about who God is like never before. Seminary is number one and number two. It's growing in your belief in God and your knowing of God, and it's also putting your money where your mouth is, putting your, putting your legs where your mouth is, and, and doing it. It's, it's walking about what you've been talking about for a while. Yeah. Okay? 
I want you to put your name down on that. If you're if you're you're committing to come to the information meeting where I'm going to go through all the details of what this seminary is that I don't have time to talk about right now. But if you feel a nudging in your heart, just to at least get some more information about it, and maybe it's something that you can do this year, maybe it's not. Maybe it's something that challenges you. Maybe it's something you go, I don't know how we're going to do this, but I feel the Lord telling me to do it, so I'm going to step out and do it. I'm going to step out and do it. That's faith. The second one is there's a sign-up sheet back there to start serving on a -a once-a-month basis in our children's ministry. Listen, I love that all you guys come and sit in here and listen to me preach the Word of God. I really appreciate it. But I would like to see you guys preaching the Word of God. And right now, there's room back there to start doing that. Okay? And start exercising and using what God's given you. What, what about if I'm not qualified? Anybody being qualified? What about if I'm not smooth with my words? I'm not smooth with my words. What about I don't like kids? It, what an extra opportunity to grow in grace. <laughs> this is a double, ble- it's a double portion blessing on you. Okay? I would like to challenge you to fill out that second time. This time I'm going to serve in the children's ministry. Miss Brianna or Adam will contact you. They'll put you on the rotation and start serving in there about once a month. But it's going to be once a month an opportunity for you to exercise to work, to do. The third one is we're having a vacation Bible school here. July 25th through the 29th. Okay? The third one is just your willingness to say, I'll serve at that, whatever capacity that you need me. I'll be there. I'll block off that that, that week and I'll show up at 5 o'clock and I'll serve in any way that I can. Okay? And I, But I put those out there for you so that you would have an opportunity to exercise. Church, we need it. We need the movement. And it's not even that the church needs it. It's that you need it. If you don't do it, God will raise up somebody else who will. Mm-hmm. Okay? Saul quit doing it, and God said, that's okay, I got David. Okay? So if you say, well, I'm not going to do it, and God says, well, I got somebody else that will. But he wants to use you. He wants to grow your faith. That's why you're going through the test, not because God hates you, but because God loves you, and he wants to make you a spiritual athlete. Right? I swear, we're, we're like these, 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 these people that are, we're upset about going to football practice and going, he hit me. He tackled me. He was running after me real fast. I didn't expect this. It's like, what did you come here for, boy? I thought you wanted me to grow your faith. Peter, I thought you wanted to walk on the waves. I thought you wanted to be able to keep your eyes on me in spite of any, anything. Right? You're not an athlete until you have muscle and you're taking of your nutrients in your body but then you're also able to make it through the test. Make it through the test. I want to invite you, just after we end service, we're going to sing one song here in just a second, but after we end service, I want to invite you to go by faith, not by obligation to me, I'm not going to check if you did it or not, but, but by faith to put you, what you're getting in into motion. I would encourage you to go sign up in one of those areas. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you're, you're making wave walkers in this church. You are, Lord. And it's different than we thought it'd be. It looks a little different than we thought sometimes. But Lord, you're trying to raise up people that don't care about the wind. They don't care about the storms. They don't care about the furnace. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, I don't care if we burn up in there. We will never bow down to your gods. We will worship the Lord our God. People like Daniel. Well, wouldn't it have been better if Daniel didn't have to sleep with the lions? Yeah, but what did it feel like to walk out of the den? And all night, all you've heard is the sleeping purr of a lion up against you. What did that feel like? What, how did he live the rest of his days? We're talking about him thousands of years later. We've got to go through these tests, God. Give us the faith to make it through these tests, Jesus. Give us the strength. Help us to, to put in the Word and to grow in our belief. But Lord, even the demons believe. We want more. We want our faith to start causing us to move, causing us to give outrageously, to start sowing into causes, into ministries, into people, and into our church, to start serving with our hands and our feet and our gifts, to start doing things that we've never done before, to put all of our insecurities and all of our unbelief on the back burner and step out where we never have before. God, and we know, Lord, that you'll send test. God, help us to rejoice in the test because they're making us better. You're making us better. You're making us stronger. We praise your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to invite that prayer team would come up.
just on the sides today. I want us to sing a song together. Well, we're going to sing the song New Wine. We're going to sing the song New Wine together today. And just in this moment, if you feel the Lord working in your heart, and maybe you want someone to pray over you, or maybe you've never believed, it all starts to believe. If you've never believed in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that He loves you, and that He has plans for you, and you need to come forward to receive that today. But also, if you just want for someone to partner with you in praying and believing for God to strengthen you and to grow you, or you want to stand together in agreement to believe for Him to do something, if you've got storms and situations, and you want to just see what happens when men and women of God partner together in agreement and how mountains move, I would encourage you to come as we sing this song. Let's stand.